You're watching Weekly Free Tutorials with Acrylic Artist Joni Young. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again today. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Acrylic Artist Joni Young and today I'm going to be showing you guys step by step exactly how to paint this fantasy piece uh, underwater. I didn't have any pictures to go by, it just kind of uh, flowed through me so this is more of an intuitive painting and it's something really special and I'm happy to share it with you guys today so I hope that you're inspired. I'm just gonna put this up a little bit closer so you guys can see all these details. Yeah, so there's gonna be a lot of different colors that we're using. I'm gonna list everything below in the description for you. Um, this is just a little, um, I think it's 12 by 12 uh, stretched canvas. It's been double primed and I always use gesso. I don't know where it went right now, but um, I like to use gesso before, especially when I want my colors to be nice and bright and vivid like this. Uh, and I'm also using some neon paints so if you guys don't have any neon paints I really recommend using them and finding some I like whole bean for the brand of acrylic neons uh, but you can use anything that you like or anything that you may have on hand let's go ahead and get started we've got a lot to do okay so I'm just gonna get a few things set up right now and get all my paint out um, I just realized I forgot my puppy so I just gotta quickly go run in the house and go grab her she always keeps me company in the studio um, okay, so I just want to show you guys a few of my pretty little things in my studio. I always like to have a little bit of sparkle and glitter, and especially when I'm about to start a fantasy piece. I am laying out all the colors right now. So I've got phthalo blue, neon orange, neon yellow, neon pink, light purple violet, I've got some turquoise, and some titanium white and I'm going to list all of the colors and brushes below in the description like I always do. All right I think we're ready to get started so there are all the colors don't they look pretty? I am going to begin with a large flat brush and I'm going to get a little bit wet first dry it off on the towel I'm going to pick up some of this neon orange, neon yellow, and I can't pour any of the white paint out because there's just um, a little bit left in the bottom, so it was easier just to take the lid off. <laughs> and I'm going to just scoop some of that titanium white up, and I'm going to kind of just start to pull that paint around and let it blend on its own wherever it falls on the canvas. Like I said earlier, I didn't know exactly what I was going to paint beforehand. I am really... Um, into kind of intuitive painting and letting things kind of just take on a story of their own and a landscape of their own. Um, so let's see where this goes. Not mixing too much. I want to have those streaks in the sky. I don't want everything to all be the same color. Okay, let's take some of that pink now. So pretty. Oh my gosh, I love this neon pink. I'm gonna scoop up some more of my white paint. And I'll start adding a little bit, oh, right around here underneath that peachy color. And then maybe bring some up here on the right. A little on the top. Lay out where the horizon is. When you're trying to decide where to put the horizon, most people naturally want to go for the middle, but try not to do that. It is better in a painting to uh, put the horizon line up higher or lower than the middle. So that's just a little tip for you guys. Okay, with the clean brush, I'm going to pull in some purple and some of that phthalo blue. Gonna mix them up a little bit then I'm gonna pull turn my brush sideways and pull across take just a tiny bit of that water just to help pull some of that paint through I don't want any 
I don't want to see any canvas through there, so sometimes just a tiny bit of, of water will help. And I'm just going to start to fluff this up a little bit, work some of that up. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out now, and I'm going to take a little bit of white and a filbert brush. I've got a medium-sized filbert right now. And I believe this is my Galleria series, and I love Galleria filbert brushes. Their paint brushes are awesome, but especially their filberts. Okay, so I'm just taking some white, a little bit of blue, and that purple. And I'm going to start lightening this up, lifting that bluey purple up with it to start making a lighter shade. And then I'm going to pull some of that in between those clouds and those colors I've added to the sky. Just create all those pretty colors that you see in a sunset. And be creative, you know, you don't have to put everything where I'm putting it. You can use a little bit more purple wherever you want. Um, even some red would be nice too. I did another little fantasy piece uh, yesterday uh, it was a 9 by 12 and if you guys want to go have a look it's on my Facebook page and Instagram and both accounts are Joni Young Art um, so I actually used quite a bit of red in that one and it, it looked really really neat um, and yeah it's got like a the same kind of feel to it it's underwater with like an old um, old ruins or castle I don't even really know I just paint whatever feels right and what comes to mind. So I'm just going to scumble this around a little bit and keep picking up a little bit of white, a little bit more of that purple, a little bit of blue. And I'm overlapping it on part of the orange sometimes just because it will give me that nice kind of earth tone color and they're very complementary too. When I'm using, and I've said this before in my videos, guys, when I'm using a lot of color and a lot of bright colors and really pretty colors, it's nice to balance that out with some earth tones, um, like kind of like muddy tones. So you can get that by mixing a bit of a, a little bit of purple over top of that orange. It'll look a little bit brown, which is always nice to have in a painting. It just makes those colors uh, look a little bit better. I'm not really sure why, but I just noticed that before I would, years ago I would just use all those pretty colors and I would stay away from browns and, and grays and, and uh, I just really found over the years and practice with painting I've learned that you need those, those colors that aren't so pretty in a painting to make the other colors look even prettier, if that makes sense. I don't know, it does to me. <laughs> So I'm just taking a damp blending brush and I'm going to soften a little bit by barely touching that canvas and just kind of dusting around and pulling over back and forth down on this horizon line. And now I'm going to take some white with this large blending brush and a little bit of the turquoise. And I'll start working on the top part of the water. And by holding the brush like this I have a lot more control. Okay, then I'm just going to blend it out and then leave the bottom uh, just blank. I'm going to switch back over to my filbert brush, pick up some more of that turquoise, and just pull in a little bit more here. Now I've got a little bit of phthalo, turquoise, and white. I'm just going to start tapping in and dabbing little hints of this here and there. I always like to have a little bit of turquoise in. Now I picked up a little bit of white just to lighten it because I know it's going to dry darker.
Okay, so I just want to add a little bit more of that purple up there. Uh, it kind of disappeared. I thought the blue was going to overlap, but it was a bit too wet underneath, so I kind of lost it. So I'm just going to go back here, add a little bit more purple. And pull some more of that purple over top of part of the peach, peachy orange color. Create a lot of soft little shadows up in the sky. So I'm picking up some white now, and I'm going to pull it across. And this is just for that line of the water that separates the top from underneath. Okay, let's clean our brush, and then I'm going to pick up some phthalo blue and go underneath for a shadow. And I should have switched over to a flat brush because I made this a little bit too thick. So what I'm actually going to do is push and pull some of this excess paint off. And I'll just zoom in and show you guys how to do this in case you're wondering and you've done this yourself. Just with a damp brush, scumble almost just lightly. Scumbling is kind of like lightly scrubbing very gently and then I wipe the excess off on a towel and then go back and pull off some more. So I'm getting as close as I can to the white paint leaving a very very thin line just for a bit of a shadow. This will help to make that water look 3D. Got a little bit of a drip there but I'll fix that later. Okay, so now I've got some turquoise on my brush, and I'm going to go turn my brush over the top and push and pull as close as I can up to the white line. So we've got the turquoise water on the top, then we've got that white line, and then that really thin blue line right underneath that. Clean our brush off again. And I picked up some of my purple and I'm going to pull in a little bit up top here. Just want to incorporate this beautiful color. It's nice and rich and it's got that warm reddish uh, tone to it. I'm going to dab a little bit here across the top over part of that peachy color. a little bit too much on there so I'm just gonna blend some of that out and take a little bit of it off all right what brush is next I've got an angle a flat little angle brush now and I'm getting ready to start my castle Take some orange and some of that purple to create a really nice dark rich color for my underpainting and my shadows. I took some phthalo blue in there too, so those three colors, purple, orange, and phthalo. Mix them up and let's start coming in here with a bit of the ruins underneath the water. And they're going to be really old and kind of broken down and and not so pretty looking under the water because they've been down there for so long and 
they're kind of falling apart and maybe have some uh, plant life, underwater sea life growing around them, all that green stuff and seaweed and I don't know, just use your imagination but make sure that you don't make everything under the water as detailed as you do above. It helps to add a little bit of mystery into the painting, I think. It kind of gives it that old, old kind of vibe to it that I like. So I'm just doing lines and little arches and purposely making them all a little bit crooked. And then I'll start by pulling in some lines above. Mixing up these colors again, those three, orange, blue, and purple. And maybe there's a little staircase down here. So I'm just going to do lots of these lines first, some thicker, some thinner, different heights. And then I'm going to just build up from there with all the details. Okay, so I'm just going to keep building up this little castle here. Changing up the colors, sometimes I'm using a little bit more blue, sometimes a bit more purple, adding a bit of white sometimes. That way you just get so many different colors and tones. So I'm keeping it really, really simple because I'm not that skilled. It's not really my forte to uh, paint buildings and structures. So what I'm doing to make it, to simplify it for myself is I'm thinking of shapes. So long skinny rectangles, skinny triangles, um, spheres, half circles. So you know, you just have to keep it simple you guys and then it makes it a whole lot less intimidating to paint. And trust me, you guys can do this. Just do one shape at a time. And if you need a little reference photo to go by, that's fine too. I always uh, recommend doing your own thing though, even if you're using um, some royalty-free, copyright-free reference photos, it's just such a good idea to use your imagination and change things up and add your own style to it. I was originally planning on painting a much larger version of this today, uh, but my plans changed as soon as I got into the studio. I saw this little square canvas kind of in the corner and I'm like, well, I need time for my other canvas to dry because I had primer on it and it's a 16 by 20. and. Uh, <laughs> As that was drying, I picked this canvas up and decided to film it just in case because you never know. So I always have my, my camera on just in case and I film myself painting and before I knew it, the whole day went by and I never did paint that big canvas. I ended up getting lost in this piece and carried away with this and that's kind of <laughs> a life of an artist, I guess. But I will be doing a much bigger piece very, very soon, possibly tomorrow. 
I've got my grandbaby and my daughter coming for a sleepover tonight, so I'm gonna sp I plan on spending the whole evening with them and all day tomorrow, um, well, most of the day tomorrow, but if I get a chance, I'll start working on my next video for you guys. Like I said, I'm just all about fantasy right now and creating those magical little worlds where anything goes and there's no rules and it doesn't have to make sense. Those are just the most fun to paint. So I'm adding little lines, really skinny lines on the tops of the roof, these little circles or little domes. And I'm adding a shadow to one side of them and a highlight to the other. Now the trick is to make sure the background isn't as light as your highlight otherwise you're not going to see them stand out they won't look 3d so you need to have either the sky darker than your highlights or your highlights uh, brighter than the sky so i am going to come in here in a little bit and add some more of that neon orange and white in behind this castle on the top I really wanted to play up all the warm tones in this. That orange, a little bit more pink. I just love having fun with color. I want to thank you guys uh, for all your kind comments, all your support on my channel. I'm always so thrilled to see my channel growing steadily every day. And if you're watching this right now, or you just tuned in and you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe and give this video a like. I'm just going to add a few more little shapes in the water here. Okay, I'm going to continue to add some more shadows in the water and a few more lines, maybe some reflections here down on the left. So as I'm working on this one, I'm already thinking about ideas that I'm getting for my next big project. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm thinking I'll do a larger piece like this. Um, I almost want to figure out a way to incorporate the castle inside of a tree, maybe growing up from the water. And then I want to have more space underwater to just kind of paint a whole world down there. I want to have some treasure and maybe use some of my gold paint, maybe even a little bit of gold leaf. Um, yeah, so I'm just really got those creative juices flowing right now and having tons of ideas. This often happens to us when we're in the midst of creating something. It just starts flowing. But when you stop and you don't do it for a while, then the creativity ends up uh, stopping too. So you have to keep up with it. Try to paint every day, you guys. 
the more you paint, the more you'll want to paint, and the more creative you'll be, and the happier you'll be. It all goes together. It's very healthy for your mind and your body and your spirit to stay creative and challenge yourself and and do more of what you love. So I find that there's a, a nice balance with creating and painting for me because I'm loving what I'm doing and the whole time I'm doing that and enjoying myself, it's it's a challenge as well, but I don't really think about it as a challenge. It doesn't feel like work, but it is. People think that uh, because we're talented that it comes easy to us, but that's not always the case. We have to work at what we do just like everybody else. And you know, sometimes we have those days where we'll work hours and hours and hours on a painting and have nothing to show for it. Um, but it was still uh, an exercise and, and uh, I guess we have learned something from it. We've learned that that didn't work and we don't want to paint like that again. <laughs> But I think the more you paint, and the older you get, and the longer that you do this, you kind of get a, a feel for what you know works, what you like to use, what colors you want to use, how you want to paint. Once I get to that point, though, I, I don't want to get too, too comfortable. I, I want to try something different, and I think um, in January that's going to be um, the challenge for me. I haven't painted... Uh, do really detailed florals in quite some time. I did do one last year for my channel and uh, it's when I was kind of just first starting out. So I don't even know if you guys have, if you're watching this, if you've seen that painting of mine. It was a rose and I painted it in black and white first, more like a, a grayscale, I guess. And then I came in with a color after. So you might want to check that out. I'll, I'll leave a link below. Um, but those are very challenging actually flowers are uh, don't come easy to me so I am going to take that challenge on for the month of January so I've added some highlights to the base of this castle a little bit of white a little bit of light bluey purple adding little windows just randomly, wherever I feel like there needs to be a little window or a little door. It's your own castle and your own little world and you can put them wherever you want. And I'm using a liner brush and a little angle brush for the windows. It's just a little dab and a pull. So remember when you're working on a small canvas that um, you're not going to have a lot of uh, area to make things really, really detailed. So all you need is a little dot or dab for those windows. And I'm also adding a little line in between just to separate and make it look like uh, some are in the foreground, some are, some are overlapping kind of and, and behind there so it looks a little more 3D rather than 2D. So that's where you really need to have some shadows and highlights. This helps make everything stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to start coming in with um, some green a little bit later and making it look like there's trees and old growth and vines and just all sorts of plants and stuff all around this castle to make it look even more charming. And I just added some little dabs using the blue, purple, and orange. Maybe even a little bit of sap green in the water. So maybe they're parts of an old, old structure or the grounds where this castle is. And, and then there's going to be bushes and, and life growing on it. Maybe some flowers. And I added a little staircase right in the entryway, the main entryway to get into the castle. So just short little lines. 
and then I did an outline in white to make that really stand out against the shadow inside. I sure wish I had the gift of writing. I would love to have a story, a book that goes along with all my little fantasy paintings. Unfortunately, I am terrible at writing. <laughs> so I'm still using this little angle brush. It's quite handy for all these little edges and lines. should have actually turned my cameras at a better angle so you guys could see all the little details I'm adding but I'll try better in my next video I'm just doing a lot of little lines though and now I've got some peach on my brush took that neon orange and mixed it with a little bit of white again and I'm gonna add some little dabs in a few windows to give it some life and make it look like uh, there are people inside there. That also really helps to make it look more inviting. I've never actually been inside of a castle ever and I would love to. Uh, um, Scotland is really on my bucket list. Ireland. England would be nice. I guess anywhere that has castles. I'm going to start adding a little bit more green down here under the water. Just pulling little swirls around some of those, maybe they're old pillars. And then I'm going to pull and flick for little bits of uh, what looks like moss, but I don't think there's moss under the water, so whatever that is, maybe some seaweed. And then I just decided right now to do a swirly little, maybe it's a broken pillar that once used to stand tall right here and it's going to have moss growing around it too. So I've got a whole playlist of fantasy paintings. Um, that I'll have a link below for you guys. There's all sorts of stuff. I've done a tutorial on a book that's opened up. It's called Book of Spells and it's got a bunch of stardust and it looks really magical and it has a beautiful glowing effect like the light. The magic is just like oozing out of this open book. It's one of my favorite ones. And then I've got another one where I have a lamppost in a forest and there's uh, little lightning bugs around or little fairies.
Then I've got one really big one where I did a whole bunch of bubbles and in each bubble inside has its own different landscape. Um, so that one took so many hours, but it was a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to take some using a clean brush. I've got that angled brush again, titanium white and neon orange. Mix the two together to get a really light pastel fuzzy peachy color. You want enough on the tip of your brush to work with. And I'm going to start adding some behind the castle to give it more of a glow. I'm just going to add a little bit more light inside a few of these windows. And then maybe even some down here under the water. And then just some for some little bits of light under there, highlights. Now I'm going to take some yellow, some white. I've got a little bit of peach in my brush still. I'm going to start swirling and pulling around that pillar down there. The light is going to be reflecting. We're going to have a few little rays of light under the water. Okay, back to the sky now. Adding some more of the neon orange. Okay, I didn't wash my brush off. I still got that little bit of yellow, white, and orange in there, and I'm picking up some of the neon pink now. And I'm going to blend it over part of that purple. And I want to add a little bit more up here on the top right. want to add a little bit of warmth right at the base of this castle and maybe all these rocks maybe there's a little bit of a beach there a little bit of sand or some little pretty cove so you can easily do that with this angle brush or any brush really any small brush and just take some white with the orange and the yellow add a few more highlights up here ok 
Okay, this is all coming together nicely. I think I'm going to switch over to a little liner brush now. But one of my smallest ones. I'm getting a little bit wet. I'm going to take my purple and my blue. I'm going to just redefine some more windows in here and areas where I want to have a lot of contrast and depth. And it's much, much easier to get in all these little areas, like if you're working on a really small canvas like this. Um, you need a fine, detailed brush, a little liner brush. I used to paint a lot smaller than this. To me, this is small, but I know there's people out there that paint on pennies. They use a a little magnifying glass, I believe, and paint landscapes uh, on little on pennies and rocks. I used to paint rocks years ago, um, but I just more like to paint on a little bit bigger of a area now, and my eyesight's not as <laughs> as good as it once was. Okay, I'm going to add some more highlights, taking white and a little bit of orange. Even though you can't really see from this angle what I'm doing, I'm just adding wherever I have a shadow, I'm adding a little highlight next to it. And on this top dome, it just looks a little bit too dark, something didn't look right about it, so I'm going inside of it rather than outside, and I'm just going to paint a little bit of white in there just to make it look more rounded and more like a sphere like it's got that rounded surface to it so now I'm looking at it and I think there's a bit too much so I'm just gonna work this out a little bit push some of this paint off blend it in a little bit better kind of just redefine it I've got to go on the outside of it now because uh, it just looks like it's blending in too much to the background so I just did a little bit of a shadow outlined it and I'm switching over to a filbert brush now here's my sap green and I'm going to start all of the foliage and bushes and moss and this is when uh, it really gets exciting and really comes to life so tapping in I've got quite a bit on my brush no water going to add a little bit more green down on the bottom too. So I'm going to add, after everything on the bottom is dry, like underneath the water, I'm going to add a filter of phthalo blue and maybe a little bit of neon yellow, just a little bit in some areas, just where I want to have a little bit more light. So I'm kind of just deciding randomly where I want to have all these bushes and, and growth. I'm just going to put a little bit right in here. Maybe on this swirly pillar. Um, some down at the base, of course. I love buildings and castles that have, and even cottages that have the ivy and all the vines growing all around it. I'm taking some neon yellow now with just a little bit of white and I'm going to add a highlight over parts of these bushes and all this greenery. So the neon yellow is, it will dry transparent, um, so that means that it won't really show up as a highlight once it's dry. Well, it definitely won't. So that's why I'm adding a little bit of the white with it, 
because I know that once it dries, it'll just be that yellow color that I want it to be. You won't see any white in with it. So I just want to try adding some vines that might be hanging down over this archway here and I'm using um, those same dark colors, the phthalo, the red, and the orange, and some sap green, and then I'm just blending in a little bit of that green down on the bottom in the water. I'm going to define this pillar a little bit more. I love how this greenery is looking on this castle. It really adds some more life to it, I think. Okay, now I'm going to go over that archway again because I really like the way this white looks better than those vines that I tried um, hanging over the front. And I'm just using the smallest filbert brush that I've got. I'm going to keep adding that white with a little bit of yellow. And I'm working wet on wet, so each time I'm picking up a little bit of that sap green. And that's nice because then you're going to get different variations of tone and, and color and shades of green in there. And it helps to make it look a little bit more natural. I'm going to add some highlights right up here on the top. Maybe even a little bit right in there. I'm going to be adding a few flowers, I think, to some of the areas down here at the base of the castle and then maybe right up into that archway. I'm thinking that would look really pretty too to have some maybe uh, light purple violet flowers. And I'm just going to do little dabs uh, to indicate that there's some bushes and some flowers growing back there. And I was thinking of adding a little bit of hot pink, maybe a little bit of orange. Just kind of incorporate all the colors that I've got in the sky, all the warm tones, and then um, add those colors into little flowers at the base of the castle and maybe even some in the windows if I have any room. We'll see. So right now I'm just going to add those light colors down uh, by these rocks and at the bottom of the castle, like I said earlier, um, it's an easy way to create a beach or a feeling that there's a little cove and a beach in there. Um, so for sand color, you just can use orange and white for that. And that's just what I've done right here. And it's just a little bit. You don't need much at all. A little goes a long way. And then sometimes for a shadow in the water, um, rather than going with like a darker shade of what I'm already using, like the turquoise, I would choose like a cool blue, um, a light purple violet, or sorry, um, light ultramarine blue is really my go-to for shadows um, on the top of the water and even sometimes below. I mean, you can just use ultramarine blue or cobalt blue and mix that with white to get that color. Okay, I'm just going to take some of the phthalo blue and cut underneath this line right here. And this is going to help to create some more depth. And we'll start pulling that down and filtering over to create our water. And I'm going to blend some of this out because it's uh, way too dark and I want it to be see-through. So I've got to work some of this off. Just brushing and scumbling, blending some of this out and pulling some of it off. 
and I'm not putting my brush in the water. I'm just wiping the excess paint off on a towel nearby. So I'm going to flip over to a lar my large flat brush now and I'm going to scumble, wiggle and pull down and then back and forth. Now at this point I wasn't sure how dark I wanted the color to be in the water. So I'm just kind of experimenting right now and I picked up a little bit of white and I'm going to go over this white line right here. Now this is very important that you have this crisp white line right here and it doesn't have to be straight and it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little bit lumpy. It'll just look like that little bit of foam that you sometimes get on top of a wave or um, the water. So I just picked up some neon yellow and I'm doing a light filter over part of the blue at the top here and then just pulling over in a few different areas to change up the light and shadow underneath the water. Now if you don't have neon yellow then you can choose any yellow that you have. I just took a towel and I dabbed off some of the excess it's a little bit too watery. My brush was a bit too wet, I think, and so I just needed to dab some of that off. And I'm going to pull in some of the phthalo blue now. And I've got my one of my mop brushes. This is a smaller size. And I'm just dusting small circles, blending softly. And then I'm going to dab a little bit off again. I'm taking some more of the sap green now and I'm going to apply some more um, underwater sea life, green plants, whatever it may be, some seaweed growing and around these pillars and even a little bit on the staircase. Anything that you've added in your water you can put a little bit of that green on. It'll make a really nice color too when you apply the phthalo blue or whatever blue you choose to put a filter over but you have to wait for it to be dry first to create a filter. Okay, I'm going to pick out one of my smaller flat brushes now and I'm going to get a little bit of water on it first and I don't want it to be dripping at all, just a little bit wet and then I'm going to pull in some of the white. I want it to be transparent so I've just got a very little bit of paint on my brush that's watered down and I'm going to pull and flick from that dark line just under the top of the water on an angle so I'm pulling diagonally to make it look like there's some rays coming down. So a pull and flick. I'll just do three or four of these, maybe a couple more. And you can make them brighter if you want. It's all up to you guys. Um, I want these to be a little bit duller. I don't want them to compete with all the light that's going on above. I want them to be just a little bit more subdued. I'm going to try a few more of these rays with a little bit of orange and white mixed and add a bit of that tone to this little white ridge up here on the top. Because the sun is setting and we have a lot of orange going on up in the sky, it makes sense that the light shining down would have a little hint of that peach in it. So I'm going to try and see how I like the way this looks in the water. I might end up taking a bit of it off. Okay, and I think that looks kind of nice. Um, I'll see how it looks as it dries, um, but in the meantime I'm going to add a little bit more uh, foliage down here with a little bit of neon yellow and white again.
I just want to have a little bit more shadow and, and highlights. So I am going to scumble a little bit of this off. I think I prefer how it looked a little bit more subdued. Okay, so now I'm going to pick one of my smallest liner brushes that I have. And I'm going to add uh, some more highlights here and then maybe some chains or some ropes coming down here. And some more highlights. I'm just using a little bit of white and a little bit of peach. So the neon orange mixed with the white. I just wanted to find all of those little highlights and then right under here I'm adding some phthalo blue for a shadow and then again on this side too. Okay, let's have a look at this. Okay, I think it's just needing a little something extra and then we'll call it done. So I'm going to take some of my sap green, Maybe a little bit of phthalo with it too to make it really, really dark in here. And just add a few more shadows and some contrast down right up this little staircase that's kind of curving up. And then I'll wash that out. And I'm going to use the same liner brush. And I've got quite a bit of that neon pink on the very tip of my brush. And I'm just going to start dabbing. So tiny little dabs of that pink, no white. Just little blobs for the indication of maybe some roses or, or bougainvillea, whatever flowers that you want to add to your castle. And I'll even add a little hint of that on that white line. I'm going to take some of the orange now and add a little bit in here as well. And I'm going to apply it partially on top of the pink and below or above. So it kind of looks like it's blending in a little bit. And let's go ahead and add a little bit on these rocks too to make them look a bit more 3D and textured and like there's lots of edges on there. Okay, I think this painting's all done. I had so much fun painting this and I'm so happy I got to share this with you guys. I can't wait to hear what you think and let me know if you give this painting a try. You can send me a picture on Instagram or my Facebook art page, Joni Young Art. Don't forget to give this video a like, leave a comment, and please subscribe if you haven't already. I want to wish you guys a wonderful day, happy painting, and I will see you next time. Bye everyone!